Hello and welcome to another video. Now today I'm riding Honda's 2024 CBR 500R. Now just look at that front end. That looks tasty. So let's throw our leg over it and see how she feels on the buttock. And then we'll just get going because I'm at Lumi's. So we've got a 785 millimeter seat height and I can totally flat foot it. I'm five foot eight with a 30 inch inseam. New dash for 2024. That little twin engine firing into life. Ooh, that's a nice R7 there. The new Honda CBR 500R. It does look pretty good. It's got revised looks copying its much bigger sibling, the Fireblade. It's even got aero winglets, I don't know if you can see that. Aero winglets look for maximum downforce as you're absolutely penning it down the Mulsanne straight or something, I don't know. Um, we've got a revised ECU map for, map for uh, maximum low to mid-range acceleration. It's been a while since I've ridden a CBR, so I'll just have to take their word for it on that one, to be honest. Before we hit the road, a huge thank you to Bikeshore for sponsoring this video. With over 30 years of expertise, Bikeshore recognises the uniqueness of every rider. Whether your ride is wild and wacky or sleek and sporty, they'll find a policy just for you. Bikeshore is dedicated to meeting your needs. From high performance sports bikes to decked out cruisers, they've got you covered. And if one bike isn't enough, check out their multi-bike policies. At Bikeshore, it's all about you. Click the link in the description for a personalised quote today. <laughs> Quite peppy off the line too. So powering this CBR 500R is the 471cc parallel twin engine from Honda, which is in quite a few of their bikes. And it's making 47 horsepower at 8,600 RPM. And it makes 43 Newton meters of torque at 6,500 RPM. So you know, it's not gonna set the world on fire with power or torque figures, but uh, these machines are pretty good. They are A2 compliant. So if you do have an A2 license, you don't have to have any kind of restriction. You can just buy one of these and off you go. Let's talk about suspension. We've got 41 millimeter shower forks up front and those are the rather premium SFFBP forks, which you only used to get on the much bigger bikes a few years back. And now they're actually on a lot of their machines, even these little 500s. So it's pretty good that Honda are putting these on everything. At the rear, we've got a Showa ProLink Monoshock, which is adjustable for preload only, five stage preload adjustment. The front is unadjustable. As you can see from the fork tops there, Braking wise, we have twin calipers up front. Those are four piston radially mounted Nissin calipers. And we've got two 320mm discs. So pretty decent performance on a such a small bike. And at the rear we've got a <laughs> we've got a single piston, single piston Nissan caliper with a 240mm disc. And we've got some very bright colours, that's rapeseed if you didn't know. But yeah, lovely British country lanes. I do like this, the little back route back from Lumi's to my house. It's certainly less busy. I've already mentioned the seat height, but the rest of the chassis, I'll repeat the seat height, is 785 millimetres. The bike weighs 191 kilograms wet, full of fuel. Uh, the fuel tank capacity is 17.1 litres, so pretty large actually for a sports bike and uh, even more so when you consider just how frugal this thing is. We've got 17 inch wheels, front and back, aluminium cast spoke wheels, and those wheels are shod with Michelin Road 6 tyres, which are renowned for being Good all-weather tyres, good in the dry, really good in the wet. Um, I've ridden a few bikes with these and they are, yeah, as they claim, they are very, very good in most situations. Sort of a good real-world tyre, if you will. It's 
road is particularly bumpy, so it's giving the suspension a good test. Electronics we've got. It's pretty basic actually, so we've got this new 5-inch TFT. We've got dual channel ABS. We've got switchable traction control, so you can turn off the traction. No riding modes, no IMU, nothing like that. It is pretty basic although it does have the ability to connect up your smartphone using the Honda Road Sync app. It's been raining for, literally, I think it's been raining for about a week. And uh, today, this afternoon, it stopped. And this is the only chance I've really had to ride the bike in the dry. <laughs> We've got full LED lights all round. We've got Honda's emergency stop signal system so essentially you slam on the anchors which I think I can do just up here and you'll see the dash lit up with uh, the hazard lights so if you do slam on the brakes really hard the hazard lights flash and the idea is that it's warning other road users that you're braking hard now I don't know about you but I think the road users in this country wouldn't have a clue as to what's going on the front indicators are on all the time as running lights, just to give you a bit more visibility or to make you visible, more visible to other road users. Some people like that, some people don't. But there it is. So in terms of engine performance this year, I want to say that they've uh, fitted with the ECU map just to give it a bit more low to mid range acceleration. It's difficult to kind of judge that because I don't have the previous gen with me. But like I said, for a 471cc bike, it does feel pretty peppy. Just as we're going into a 30. <laughs> uh, so what I can talk about while we're in a 30 is the throttle response is lovely and smooth. And I know the old uh, 500s used to be quite snatchy. That seems to be something that Honda have really addressed. And it's actually really lovely and smooth now. None, none of that jerkiness, which is good. As far as I know, this is a Euro 5 Plus engine. So it is fully certificated <laughs> for whatever Euro flipping emissions law it is this, these days. Euro 6, Euro 5 Plus. I think Euro 5 Plus covers the Euro 6 stuff anyway. But we'll get out onto the open road before we talk more about the engine. I just want to briefly touch on the suspension while I'm going through town. Suspension from those shower shower shocks is remarkably plush. It's really lovely actually. It's very smooth, really smooth damping. There's no crashiness at all. Um, I think if you start pushing the bike on, it might start to feel a little bit soft in terms of the spring rate, but. Uh, the actual damping is lovely for real world use and I mean on bumpy imperfect roads that are synonymous with the UK. Here we go, fourth gear, roll on. It struggled a little bit so you do need to get the bike in the correct gear. Clutch action is really nice. It's almost comically light, like I reckon one finger, yeah one finger no problem for your clutch hand. Gearbox is nice and slick. We've got a six-speed gearbox. No issues with that at all. So we have got a few slower roads, but this is a bumpy, bumpy old road. And like I said, suspension, certainly the low-speed damping is very, very good. But I think for a bike like this, it's absolutely perfect. I know it says CBR on the side of the fairings there, but let's be honest, it's not a true sports bike. It is a CBR. I, I sort of class these as CBR inspired design you know it doesn't have the CBR performance but it does certainly look good aesthetically it's, it's gorgeous I think it's really really pretty it feels pretty positive when you're turning it in not the quickest to turn in but it does feel quite stable it's not as uh, sort of nippy as perhaps the Hornet the 500 Hornet might be very positive confidence inspiring handling shall we say but we'll uh, see what it's like doing a bit of the faster stuff in a bit 
so let's talk about ergonomics doing the slower stuff. So the seat is fairly comfortable, actually. Now I've ridden all the way to Lumi's, that's about an hour. I'm about you know, 20 minutes or so riding back from there. And my bum is absolutely fine. No pain, no aches, no real weight on my wrists, even though it's a sportier riding position. You are led forward a tiny smidgen. It really is quite comfortable because you've got these massive handlebar risers. You can see those. Um, they do stick up a good couple of inches from the top of the forklift there. And uh, yeah, I think, I don't think I would have any issues doing a tour on this. I think it'd be very comfortable. So we're talking about the faster oh, performance. One thing I would say about this 471cc motor is just how smooth it runs. It really is remarkably smooth. Like the vibes are barely perceptible doing, I would say, legal speeds. Perhaps if you're near the red line that would change, but yeah. And handling <laughs> is pretty good. Like I said, it's not the quickest to turn in, but it does feel very stable mid-corner. Very planted, you know exactly where it's going to go. It just does take a little bit of... A little bit of convincing to turn in. It's not like wallowy or slow, it's just... Um, it could just be the riding position because you're kind of straight for the front a bit more. Or it could be that I'm just needing to count the steering a little bit more. I'm used to riding naked bikes most of the time. We'll do a little bit of a walk around actually. We'll just go, go up here, shall we? If we're on a country lane, we're using this just to get to somewhere. So, you know, this bike is not designed to be taken on gravel roads. We have a very large water feature, <laughs> which I will go around. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, okay, look, this bike is not designed for this sort of stuff, but... Oh, that suspension is just bloody lovely. Like, you'd expect to be absolutely being smashed to smithereens. So let's just whack it here. Yeah, there she is, in all her splendour. Does look good, this is the Grand Prix red colour. So there's your new, newly designed headlights. They've taken a lot of cues from the new Fireblade. There's the winglets. Don't know if they do anything, they probably don't. It's probably just a styling exercise. There's your Nissin four piston calipers, big show of 41mm forks, twin discs up front, Michelin uh, Road 6 tyres. Like I said, the indicators are on all the time. Fairing mounted mirrors as per sports bike fashion. They've also redesigned the fairings and the tail unit, so I'll show you the light at the back. So this is also the same light that's on the 500 Hornet and the NX500, I believe. There's your single missing caliber there. Dual exit exhaust doesn't sound too bad. I mean, it's a 180 degree firing order, so it's not going to sound amazing. You know, if you get a race pipe on it, it's just going to sound louder. I would, it would be lovely if they had like a 270 degree firing order on their bikes, but this is what we've got for now. And there's the little 471cc lump, uh, 47 horsepower, 43 newton meters of torque, steel diamond frame, steel from the, uh, I think these have always been steel diamond frames. Looks like a bolt on subframe as well this year, I think. That's what that looks like to me. We have a car coming, so I'll move over. We have a pillion seat, although I'll be honest, not sure how comfortable that will be. That does look pretty uncomfortable to be honest. Uh, there's your gear lever, there's no quick shifter, which is a bit of a shame. This bike is crying out for a quick shifter. It's top of the fork legs there. Fork legs show a SFFBP. It's all, in all, very, very lovely. So we've got switchable traction control and it's just a button here. And it's as simple as just holding that down. There you go, traction is off and that's back on. No diving into menus, nothing like that. It's all very, very good. Menu system is quite nice. You've got lots of trip meters, so trip A, trip B, uh, mileage, uh, miles per gallon, change the the display type uh, you can reset stuff you can there's all sorts we could go into that but we're not going to do that in this video 17.1 litre fuel tank that's probably good for around about 250 maybe more miles you got these little scoopy bits here which look pretty cool uh, 160 rear section tire I think that's about all I can tell you let's turn off the traction actually 
<laughs> right, we're back on the road. The CBR 500R. So, engine performance. What do I think? Like I've said in other reviews of the, uh, the bikes with this 471 engine in, it's surprisingly fun. It's more fun than you'd imagine a 500cc bike to be. It's really smooth, it's got, I think it's got enough poke to kind of keep the people who this bike is aimed at entertained. And that's people on an A2 license. If you are on a full license, you know that it might not be enough for you, but that's down to the individual. If this was my only choice, so if I was on an A2, I'd be perfectly happy with this, this bike and this engine. It is pretty, I don't know, it's pretty diverse because you've got like the NX500, you've got the Naked Hornet, you've got the CL500, you've got the Rebel. So it's in a lot of different style bikes and I think, yeah, I think it's a decent little engine. Here we go, power! <laughs> it's a very predictable linear ride. And I think, like I said, for the people who this bike is aimed at, A2 license holders, I think that's a good thing. It's not gonna kind of scare you or tip in quicker than you're expecting. The ergonomics and comfort, while it is a CBR, so you would expect it to be quite sporty and maybe a little bit uncomfortable, it really isn't. It's surprisingly comfy. I usually, within like an hour, I usually find out if a bike's gonna be comfy or not. And everything about this bike, like, you know, it's really comfortable, the seat's really good, my bum's not aching. The handlebar position is a lot higher than you'd imagine because of those risers. Uh, knee position, okay, that might cause issues. I put some footage of me sat on the bike here. But yeah, maybe knee position on a super long journey might cause you some problems, but I've been on the bike for, what, a couple of hours now and it's been fine. You've got electronics, but just the ones you need really, so ABS, traction control and you can turn off traction super easily while you're riding too there you go i just turned it off you do get a slightly annoying orange light on the dash but turn it back on again while you're riding again no riding modes nothing really to faff around with this very what you see is what you get motorcycle very simple but quite rewarding to ride actually I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Very CBR-esque in its design. And that's, of course, not accidental. That's exactly what they've gone for. It's got a large fuel tank, so you're gonna get really good fuel economy from this engine. I did over 220 miles on the NX500, which has the same engine, same tank, same chassis. It's pretty much the same bike other than the riding position and perhaps a slightly different uh, either gearing ratios or ECU map, but you can expect similar performance from this CBR 500R. And that engine just delivers such lovely smooth power. Granted, it's not a lot of power, but it is a nice smooth delivery. Colors wise, you've got two. You've got this Grand Prix red, which does look really lovely, especially when the sun is out. Or if you want to feel a bit more stealthy, you've got the blackout black option. Uh, I think it's called matte, I don't know what they call it, powder thing, gunpowder, grey, black, something like that. It's black, it does look nice, I think it's got like a matte finish on some of the bits. Oh, we've got a lovely church and steeple. Servicing and warranty, now the good thing about Hondas is there are dealerships absolutely everywhere. Certainly in the UK and Europe. You can get a pillion on the back of the bike, but I'm not sure they'll be all that happy with you. <laughs> Unless they're like... 30 kilos. Oh, I haven't talked about the brakes. Let's talk about the braking performance. So they are quite impressive actually. They're dual 320mm discs and dual radially mounted four piston calipers. The initial force is good. However, when you do feed power through the lever, the ABS does tend to get a little bit involved. Um, it is a little bit intrusive, not, not horrifically so, but you can sort of feel it. So I think if you were to do like a track day on this bike, you would certainly find the limitations of the braking very quickly. But for the road, I'd say it's perfectly fine. Seating comfort is much better than you would imagine, it being a sporty, 
sporty motorcycle or sporty looking motorcycle. Gearbox is nice. You do have to make sure you're in the right gear. And what I mean by that is if you're in fifth and you're doing 40 miles an hour and you try and wind on the power, it just doesn't have enough torque and power to kind of get away with that. So you're gonna to have to bang it down a few gears. But it's a really nice slick gearbox to be honest. Wind protection, now you do get a little screen with a little bubble on it. And I'll be honest, it's fine. For me, it's fine. At speed, it does get a little bit noisy, but you know, such is the nature. You could chuck down and look like a proper racer, but you might look a little bit silly. But uh, I'm not really getting any buffeting or wind blast. There's just a bit of noise. Oh, actually, no, I can feel a tiny bit of buffeting just on my shoulders, but that's it. But all in all, wind protection is pretty good from that front fairing. So there are pros and cons to every bike I ride and I do like to try and find some negatives. This bike is absolutely screaming out for a quick shifter. That's kind of one of the things I think about the most when I'm on this bike is I go to make a gear change because of the sporty kind of position and nature of the bike. Um, and it doesn't have a quick shifter, which I don't even think it's an option. It doesn't have any riding modes now. Some might say that it should have some different riding modes. I I don't know, I don't think it needs them because it has only got 47 horsepower. It's not like it's particularly quick. So other negatives, it doesn't turn in particularly quickly, but again, I think that might be a good thing because of the people who are gonna be riding this fairly new to riding. There is also a positive to that in that it's really stable. But I think that's really it. The only two negatives I can think about are that no quick shifter and not massively agile. But there's lots to love about this bike from the very plush suspension to that peppy little engine to the comfortable seating position and the absolutely gorgeous looks. You know, if you've got a full riding license, perhaps you might be looking at other options like the R7 or JS68R that have got a bit more power. But if you're on an A2 license, oh, and also those brakes are really good. Yeah, if you're on an A2 license, this, this is an absolute winner, I think. Very well done, Honda. I think this is a great bike. I cannot wait to ride the new CBR 600 RR, which is, that's going to be tasty, and the new Fireblade as well. Although I think the Fireblade, probably a bit much for the UK roads, to be honest. Right, I think that will just about cover this video while I poodle through this lovely little quaint village with thatched houses and little sculptures on, on top of the roofs. So all that's left me to do is say thank you very much for watching this video. If you do go out today, do ride safely, but remember to have fun, of course. Otherwise, what's the point? And until next time, you take care and peace.